Do you want to make a hat like this? I'm going to give you some basic skills and tips to be able to knit. One of the first things I ever knit was a bookmark. Ooh. <laughs> So that's a really simple thing that I learned to make with my grandma and it's just garter stitch and it's really simple. I'm going to show you some knitting with different types of yarn, but what yarn did you choose? So you've got your yarn, now you need a needle. It's probably best to choose something that's about the same thickness as the wool that you've decided to use. Do you remember the makeup brushes that I used in the other video? Well, I'm going to show you how to knit on some of these. If there are any scouts out there, you might already know how to make a slip knot. A slip knot is the first thing that you need to do when you're knitting. And the reason that a slip knot is great is that by pulling one length of the thread on the knot, you can make the loop bigger or smaller it slips so that it'll fit on a big needle or a small needle. Wrap the wool over your finger from front to back. Flip the loop off your finger and holding that loop move the yarn on the left hand side through the loophole you just made. If it helps pull loop number two with your right finger and thumb. You don't need to pull it too tight it may take a few goes, but basically that's it. Wrap the wool over your finger from front to back. Flip the loop off your finger. And taking that left hand wool, push it into a loop through the loop you just made. If you need to hold the loop and the wool that's fine and use your right finger and thumb to just pull that loop through the first loop you made. And that's basically it but make sure you've got enough yarn so you don't accidentally undo the slip knot. Now pop your needle in that hole and you're done. If you need some different tips, why don't you just look on YouTube? There are loads of other how to make a slip knot videos as well. Sheep and Stitch does a really good tutorial and there are loads of different ways that people learn things. So I'm sure you'll be able to find something to help you. Cast on. No, it's not a character from Beauty and the Beast. It just means get that wool on your needles. Right, let's cast on. Oh, sorry, cast on. Let's just have a little look at this example of a long tail cast on. This is what we're about to do. You can see I'm moving the wool with my thumb, my left thumb, and making a loop. I'm bringing some wool around and that holds in place. And then I'm flopping the loop back over and that's going to make a double loop, which is a, a sort of a stitch, I suppose. So the thumb on the left is making a loop and the finger on the right is bringing the wool over and then the loop is going back over. So once you get into it, it's it feels quite natural to do. So let's have a look at this in real slow motion. So to start with, I like to measure out how much wool that I'm going to need for a long tail cast on. I'll need six stitches. If you want to make a toy scarf, that's enough with chunky wool. So I wrap it around the needle one, two, three, four, five, six times. And then I'll make a little slip knot 
at that point where I was just pinching the wool. This means there'll be enough to make all the loops that we need on the needle. See we're making that slip knot that we did earlier? That's it, pop your needle in there. And you're going to have the longest wool that's attached to the ball of wool on the right hand side and on the left hand side you'll have the shorter bit of wool. Right, so I've slipped my thumb under the wool on the left hand side and then slipped the needle through that wool and then wrap the yarn around and then flop that little loop on my thumb over onto the needle. I'm going to do it again. I'm just sorting out the wool so it's out of the way. Yep, so I'll slip the thumb under the wool and then poke the needle through that wool, wrap the yarn around with my right hand finger and then flop the loop back over with my thumb. And yep, there I'm doing it again and wrapping it around and flopping the loop back over. Okay, let's look at a really slow-mo version of this. Okay, what you need to do is... <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, so, pull the wool from back to front over your thumb. Get that needle with your right finger and thumb. Poke it through the wool loop. And wrap around the yarn, around the needle. And then flop the loop over with your thumb. And then pull the wool on the right hand side a little bit tighter. And then get your thumb underneath the wool and pull it up. And then put the needle through the front bit of wool and pull it towards the back. Then you're going to go to your right finger and thumb again. I'm just using my finger um, to wrap that wool around because I've just learned that technique now that my dexterity is a bit better. So flop the loop back over the needle. This is really great for fine motor skills. I think I'm pulling the wool here to get, um, get it a bit looser. You don't want your wool to be too tight while you're knitting. And once you get to the end of the row, you just turn the knitting, like I just did, over to start your knit row. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. Garter stitch. This is named after the woolly ribbon that people would make to hold up their woolly socks. People used to wear really long socks in Elizabethan times. In garter stitch, every row is a knit row. Every time you do a knit row, you make these wiggly lines or rows like a wave on the other side of the fabric. And on the side of the fabric that you're looking at, it makes a kind of flat paddling area. So you have the wavy bits and the flat paddling areas. So this is a knit row that I'm showing you. So I'm getting the right hand needle and poking it through the hole in the this is sort of in the loop in the left hand needle. See, I've got the right hand needle poking through that loop and then pulling the yarn around. Let's look in slow-mo. So I'm pushing the right needle through that loop and wrapping the wool from the right hand around with my finger. I'm pushing my left thumb finger, <laughs> my left finger down and pulling that loop off. So I get the right needle, push it through the loop on the left needle, make sure you can find the hole. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and wrap the right hand yarn over the needle, push the left finger through and then pull the needle out the front and pull that loop off. So push the right needle through the loop. 
pull the yarn around the back of the needle and towards the front and push it through to the left hand side and then pull the wool off. So you're pushing the needle through, wrapping the wool around, pulling the right needle back and through and then over. Pushing the right needle through, wrapping the wool around, pulling the needle down but not completely out of it and through to the left hand side and then pull it off and that's a knit row. So if you want to watch that again that's cool, it's always good to practice these things. So on the next row with garter stitch it's all the same stitches so you just do that again. It might be a little bit tighter this time because you've made the wavy bits come onto your side of the fabric. So let's have a little look at this. So I'm pulling the needle, pushing it through and wrapping the wool around it just like before and then pushing my left finger to guide it through. If you need to hold the top of the needle to stop those stitches coming off before you want them to, that's good as well. So push your right hand needle into that hole, wrap the wool around with your, foot, your pointer finger, your Peter pointer, push the needle back through and to the left and then pull the wool off. So you're pushing the needle through and look, I'm using my left finger and thumb to hold the needle and the wool together. So push the wool through that hole and wrap the yarn around and push that needle through and over to the left and off. Push the needle through, wrap the right hand yarn around and push the needle down but out to the left. That's it. And keep going with that. Brilliant. I'll let you watch the end of that film. I think it's always good to watch what your hands need to do. Here's how I've been getting on with mine. So I used about 10 stitches to be able to get this kind of size and I'll just keep going doing knit rows and you can do it for as long as you like to make a really long toy scarf for one of your toys. Um, check out my video on gauge because that's going to be a really good video. It's going to show you how to choose the right needles and measure your wool so you can make a good size scarf for yourself. Tea break, who wants some squash? St, st. This is stocking stitch or stockinette stitch. So when knitters are reading the instructions or a pattern on how to make a jumper or some socks, there'll be a few code words. So you might get a K, can you guess? That means knit. Or a P, that means pearl. So they like to use this code but today I'm going to show you how to do st, st or stocking stitch. Stockings are basically tights and this is the stitch that people use to make a nice flat surface. If you look at any tights, they're lovely and smooth and that's what we're going to get from stocking stitch. So just like you did with garter stitch, we're just following the last couple of stitches on a knit row. And when we get to the end of the row, we're going to turn our work 
like we did before and um, turn it over but then we're going to do something a little bit different we're going to do a pearl row now when you're purling you're holding your wool a little bit differently so I'll just show you that now remember you can pause this video at any time to have a little look at what you've done so this is row two and this is a pearl row with a pearl row you make a wavy line on the side you can see right so we're taking the right hand needle and pushing it through the loop and then pulling the wool to the front and then going behind the needle and round to the front and then you're pulling that needle back and with your thumb pushing the wool and the needle through the loop and out and then you can see the wool on the left needles coming off as well okay let's try it again so you're taking the right needle pushing it through that loop at the top and the yarn's still in front so you're going to wrap it around the back of that horizontal needle and pull it around the front and hold it tight so that it stays on that needle while you push your thumb pushing that needle back and then pull the wool off let's try it again take the needle and push it through that loop and pull the yarn round the back of the needle around the front and holding it tightly so the needle stays on but loose enough so that it's comfortable and pull the wool off okay last one push the needle through that loop and with the wool wrapping it round the back of the horizontal needle and through the front and hold it nice and tight and then pull it through that loop up and over brilliant now just repeat rows one and two so you just go knit row pearl row knit row pearl row and then you'll have a really nice flat piece of knitting How many little V's can you find in this piece of stocking stitch? Every little V is one stitch and it'll help you to see how many rows you've knitted. Do you remember? Here's a little recap of how to knit stocking stitch.
thanks for watching and please like and subscribe below if you like this video.